that in general we'll do the intro um but that's for you to keep track of i'm just a guest you're a guest really yeah you're not, you you not a co-host that's not what i had an understanding of we're co-hosting what is this like the a series bell, or something? the podcast is called hawk and bell it's the whole entire podcast <laughs> I didn't get that. <laughs> Hi, my name is Reggie Reg, and you're listening to the Hawk and Bell Podcast. <laughs> sure. All right. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to the Hawk and Bell Podcast, of which my wife didn't know that it's both our podcast. She thought she was a guest for one episode. <laughs> Welcome. Now, I don't know, am I calling you by your first name, or do you have a radio name? We didn't discuss that prior to. I don't know. Lady B? Lady Bell? La- that's so corny. I like Lady Bell. That's so corny. Whatever. La- that's all I got to remember that now. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't noticed, or you, you didn't notice, or if you haven't paid attention, I have my wife in the studio, a.k.a. Lady Bell. Why Lady Bell? I don't know. Lady Bell. You got something more clever? We'll, we'll discuss that. For right now, we'll go to Lady Bell. All right, Lady Bell, welcome to your first ever podcast. Is this the first time you ever recorded? No. When did you ever record? You had done the documentary series for me? Yeah, that wasn't the same, though. That was for a video project that I did um, dealing with grief. But to answer your question, no, it's not the first time I recorded. Okay. Maybe recorded with you in this setting. Who else did you record with? We were in a different setting when we did that. Oh, at the, at the student station. Yeah. Right, right, right. Well, you know, um, before we get started or as we get into these different topics, ladies and gentlemen, if you're, all, if you're listening to this podcast, it's because either one, you're curious or two, you're curious. Because <laughs> <laughs> okay. we don't have anything else. This is our, literally our first episode. And our objective is really just to discuss life, culture, politics, whatever that we have on our mind and be able to um, bring this thing, I guess, into clarity. That's the word I want to use. Clarity. I don't know how to define that, but clarity. But you know what else I want to clarify? It's not my fault that I pee on toilet seats, Bill. No. It's not. (laughs) It's the natural weakening of the... Of the muscles. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like, I, you know, we haven't discussed this privately, but I feel like publicly we have to be able to, because I feel like there's other men out there. Now, uh, admittedly, I'm putting myself out there because everybody's going to think I'm nasty and everybody's going to judge me because you all are not brave enough to put yourselves out there. But I'm putting myself out there for the sake of all husbands that have ever tinkled on the toilet seat now imagine this scenario you're coming in at 3 30 4 o'clock in the morning um you know of course you're tired and you go in the bathroom you're not trying to make too much noise you don't try to turn on too many lights and you pee every once in a while and the myth is we don't pee straight you know and and, and ever since should i talk about my surgery that's on you <laughs> But I know that peeing on the toilet is not the issue. The issue is not cleaning up after yourself. Well, you know. That's the issue. Because we're all grown. We all have little splish splash episodes. But, um. Yeah. It's not. not, It's not. But it's not. That's what the wipes are for. That's what the disinfectant is for. I'm not. That's what products are for. I'm not always. I'm not always cognizant. Uh, the P and ladies and gentlemen, y'all don't know how bad uh, Lady Bell tries to embarrass me in front of our own child. I will be sleep in the bed, eight o'clock in the morning. Greg, can you wipe the toilet seat? As my dear daughter is looking at me with her loving eyes and aspirations of wanting to be like me one day, and here she go putting my business out in the street in front of a six-year-old. Who does that? What kind of mother are you? Don't use her bathroom. <laughs> You have one for that reason. Uh, well, you know, sticks and stones may break my bones, uh, but it's not. It's not my intention. I don't intentionally not clean up after myself. I'm just. I just don't pay attention. I kind of feel like that's like the continual theme of just over everyday life. There's a lot of details that I miss that I, I don't know. Just don't care. That's not an excuse. 
Anyway, what was our what was our, our intro thing? Who's coming into? I don't into? know how we got on this tangent though. I, I really don't. Well, you know, I'm just putting out there for all husbands. You know, put myself out there. You know, stuff happens. You know, so. My name is Dawn, and you're listening to the Hawk and Bell podcast. I may not be the sharpest, but that's not smart. Don't be dumb all your life. This is a new segment that we discuss when we talk about things that happen in the news that we're wondering, like, how did this happen? Or, as I told but Okay, just dumb news. Just dumb news. Uh, our first topic, do you got the first topic or do I got to pull it up? You, I don't, yeah, I don't have it up. Let's talk about the the white guy that says that he is, um, he wanted to clarify white lives matter. What'd you think about that article? And actually, before we get into the article, let's play a video clip so the listeners can hear the same thing that they listen to and then, uh, we'll get to it. The purpose of these flyers was to raise awareness with whites about the plight that, that face uh, our people in this country. Lacey is new to the area and chose to leave the flyers in predominantly white areas based on a suggestion from a friend. He says all of the information is factual. There was crime statistics, you know, based on race, which is uh, which, which is part of the FBI database and the, and the Department of Justice. It's not something that's, that was fabricated out of the blue, you know. Blair Hoplite is one of several dozen who woke up Thursday morning to find a flyer inside a plastic bag on his driveway. This gave me the impression they were putting other people down. And that doesn't work. It's not going to make our country any better. Lacey sees things differently. I consider myself a racist, but not because I, I believe in hatred for anybody else. It's because I love my own people. Lacey says he's actually received <laughs> positive feedback after distributing the flyers. That's why he plans to do it in other communities in the future. He says he won't stop standing up for what he believes in. Reporting in Lewiston, Alley 27 Eyewitness News. He killed me with that. He said, <laughs> what do he say? I'm a racist. I love my own people. He's a racist. Not that he hates other people, but he just loves it. And, and the thing about it, he's going around the neighborhood, passing out statistics about black folks and the crime rates and all this other stuff. And I'm just, my first question, only But question, before we even get there, let's point out how privileged him, well, he <laughs> how privileged he is that he can afford to put flyers in a plastic bag that is actually very true you know what the presentation is awesome <laughs> if you would be able to do it right that it is not a weathered flyer dang you know what and that's a and my wife gets on me lady bell she gets on me because you know for the holidays i like to pass out cookies and things like that and she wants to buy tin cans with little fluffy tissues and make it look presentable i'm like man that's that's gonna cost but this man took the same attitude instead of passing out cookies he passed out racist flyers <laughs> she just wrote a note like we <laughs> yes bell just bell be fine yeah because lady bell uh, that's, a, that's a, yeah bell i like that i hope you edit that out right now <laughs> <laughs> so yeah um that was a, it was a beautiful presentation you know plastic bags that means he really thought about this like he really yes he put a lot of thought into this i wish he put a you know i wish he put more thought into the statistics than the presentation of passing out um these flyers about crime rates of black people like specifically oh he did he put a lot of thought it, into it he i guess copied off of the twitter rants from um the 45th president and at least that's what the article indicated thank you for introducing so, that because i mean i don't think he really well he did his research but you know just like that student that copies off a of wiki uh, wikipedia right. and calls it a fact right. you know how valid is that i think the the it's the way we interpret statistics right like, that's another thing that statistics are manipulated to push a certain agenda and that's what i feel like he's doing and some people don't even realize that it's an agenda they don't even realize well he did he said the dude said that i am a racist 
And then he tried to. The funny part was he tried to redefine what a racist was by defining a racist. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you all over the place. And I, I respect his First Amendment, his right to speak and talk about and pass out flyers about his belief system. But the dumb thing about it is that, yo, you define what racism is by calling yourself a racist. That's just to me. That's just like you, sir. I'm not the sharp. I'm not the sharpest knife in, in the what you call it shed. In, in the shed in the drawer. Who puts knives in the shed, Bell? Hey, it could be a machete. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah, but yeah, I, I, it's just it's just ultimately, but it's See, it's all about perspective. But it, I mean, it is it's scary to me because there will be some people who will look at those flies, and they, we have we've seen that. Well, I've seen that. You don't have a social media, I do. Um, people, My concern is just why continue to push the hatred agenda. Or I mean, because he loves white people, he loves not Considering it to be a hatred agenda, okay, he, a message of love. But when you start loving yourself so much that you're alienating others, is that truly love? Hmm. I, I, I'm sitting here thinking about that. So, so repeat that again. When you love yourself so much, or start loving yourself so much that you start alienating others, is that truly love then? Because uh, he said it was, I love my own people. He did say that. And how he, now? How mushy, and how much of a melting pot is his own people, or are his own people? I don't know. I guess yeah. So what you're saying is that how do you do? You didn't say this, but the way I'm interpreting is how do you define white people? Where do yeah, white people who come are from? Are his people? Yeah. Aside from just white, well, what does the white mean right. in his mind? Because obviously white is just as much a melting pot as any other race or because white culture. essentially is not a race white is just a term for skin color yeah and so yeah man like who you standing up for irish all of them i guess they're all european <laughs> so he should say i love all my europeans <laughs> okay, but I there's love a lot of european africans yeah but you know we know better than that He's just say, he's just simply saying he's simply saying that black people are inherently more violent, commit more crime than white people, and he wants to keep his white people enlightened. <laughs> that's that's exactly what he said. You know, don't be dumb all your life, sir. That's not true. Um, if you're gonna pass out statistics, make sure that you keep the thing equal and make sure you look at everybody the same way. I don't know. I guess I'm just talking to myself because he's not gonna listen to his podcast. Uh, the next. Topic. We might want to drop a disc for him to listen. <laughs> that <historic> <laughs> <a plastic> bag. <laughs> right. Um, what do you feel about this news article that was uh, published in the New York Post? Um, Jewish people sucking the blood off infant penises. How do you feel about that? Um, well, hold on, let me get the highlights. Let me get the highlights. The highlights is two babies were are dead in New York since 2004 after this particular ritual, which I've heard or read that this is a very um, prominent practice in very orthodox, orthodox. Um, Hebrews. Um, they believe that the blood is a life-giving element, and critics dismiss the biblical practice and call it a primitive or call it primitive nonsense. So what they do, of course, I think what they have eight days to circumcise a child, and um, when they go to circumcise it, the little the the Jewish dude, I guess they call him H A B E L. I don't know how to pronounce that, so I'm not going to try to. Habel, I guess I just did. No, Mohel, Mohel, M O H E L. Oh, okay. Some. All right. Cool. Um, yeah. Um. What I think about. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I, as I'm just, well, let me describe his practice. And so, because some people don't know, so they put a little hood over their head, um, they cut the penis, and then they put the lips on the penis. They suck a little bit of blood out. And the, what they said, the the traditional Jewish community was it was it was introduced because it was a sanitary uh, way of preventing diseases. At least that's yeah what they believed. And I mean. Saliva, in many instances, is considered to be sanitary. Hold up. To an extent. Hold up. We're going to pause right there because I told you growing up that I used to suck the blood off my knee and you said I was disgusting. 
I still think it's disgusting <laughs> because I, I mean, who likes the taste of blood? It's not that I like the taste of blood. I thought as a eight year old that me sucking the blood off my knee was regurgitating the blood so that it goes back into my system and I'm not losing nothing. I was a dumb eight year old, but that's not anybody's business. <laughs> well, I didn't understand. I still think it's disgusting. It was disgusting back then. It's disgusting today. Yeah, well, you know. But as far as the practice and the ritual, yeah. this is something that's been done through ages. My concern was not so much the ritual itself, but what does that man have that he's spreading to these kids? That's what you're thinking about? You're not thinking about he's putting his mouth on a, a baby penis that didn't cross <laughs> like that part I still can't get past that part never mind the reason why they do it but the fact that th like one as a parent you're allowing another grown man you gotta understand though you're looking at it as an outsider you gotta understand that there are different cultural things that are done within different cultural groups that are normal practices for whatever the reasoning might be um, i.e. you know the stretching of the plate uh, on the bottom lip being a sign of beauty or why you gotta bring Africa into this you did that on purpose or the bracing of the neck being um, the longer the neck the more beautiful it is right. other cultures just the jewelry right. aspect I mean in in different cultures there are different aspects of what is to be a part of that culture and what the rituals are as you go from one age to another I mean I, I, I actually respect that and I do understand that I uh oh I just dropped our whole mix board are we still recording yeah we still recording <laughs> look at that um, I do respect that, and I do believe that I'm looking at it through um, a an American mindset or American Western. eyes. Uh, yeah, all that. But it's still very difficult for me to process and understand, especially... I mean, I wouldn't allow it on my personal child, of course. but I'm not part of that culture. I don't have that set of belief system, you know, that belief system. Um but my concern is because we all have, and you know, herpes is, you, it could be simplex um, virus one or simplex virus two. I'm not exactly sure, I don't recall which one um, it is, but we carry that germ on our bodies. Herpes? Naturally, yes. I didn't know that. Yes. It's just a certain population, it gets activated, and when it's activated, that's where you see the sores on the mouth or um, the different breakouts. As you age, the breakouts become less and less, but... Um, it's still on them, right? No, there is no cure for herpes. Right, and we didn't we didn't talk about that part. So, the state of New York wants to or has I don't know have you have you I believe they want to ban the practice because of the spreading of herpes uh, among these Jewish priests to the infants, and they're saying that um, you know it's it's not only unsanitary, it's unhealthy for uh, the you're not protecting the child, blah blah blah, and then there's a certain demographic of rabbis that are saying. Um, you're infringing on our religious beliefs. Yeah, on the religious freedoms. And, and so I actually, you know, I'm, I'm I'm backing up from joking about you know a grown man. And what's, what what the ironic thing is that in their minds, this Jewish practice of sucking the blood off of the penis is a form of preventing infection. And maybe back in the day that was the the reality, but things nowadays are so polluted or. And we're just so exposed to so many different things that that's why my concern was what is this man doing? What does he have? I guess that's being passed on to the child that's creating that situation. You only get herpes through sexual trans uh, transmission, right? Bodily fluids, the exchange of bodily fluids. So when I yeah so right you have to in other words you got to come in contact with somebody else in and order to get exactly. that exactly so somebody that has um, I know that you can reduce um, your exposure if the person covers up or whatever or not but if they're during a position where they have an outbreak is right. what they call it I don't know like I said I again First Amendment right. Uh, or whatever amendment it is for one to practice their religion freely 
uh, in the Christian realm, I remember a case of a child that had a baseball sized tumor on their forehead and the parents tried to pray the tumor away, uh, away and they, did, they didn't believe in taking their children to the doc that church actually. Well, just like you have some folks that refuse to accept blood. Um, uh, from, Jehovah's Witnesses, from, right. Um, folks, um, as far as don donators of blood from the blood banks yeah. when they go to have certain procedures, that's why though you're given that option, of course, due to if it's not an emergency situation, um, to like say you're going to have surgery, you can go and deposit your own blood in the bank to have it stored up for the procedure. But um, stay in front of Mike. Too. But um, I mean, what are you going to say? No, um, you can't have your own blood. Uh, well, like, like I said, uh, this is to me very dumb because, and going back to my example of the, the people that don't believe in taking their kids to the doctor. Uh, there was once upon a time there may have been a shortage of medical professionals in, in history, in ancient history, but we live in a day now where there's a lot of resources that are readily available to us. And so certain practices either have to be updated or be done away all the way altogether. To circumcise a child now and you know, to do the whole procedure, we have a means of doing that cleanly. So, you know, with sanitation, with gloves, and uh, I was going to call it antiperspirant. What's that called? But it's not just about the procedure. <laughs> it's true, it's true. For them, it's the ritual. Uh, so this is the problem that I have. And that, I mean, I I would have to know more about the faith and uh, that Jewish faith and the way the Orthodox um, believe to understand, I guess, more of where they're coming from. Um with performing this ritual because well i mean there's a lot of of that particular religion I, that i don't understand because no. i agree that the veil has been broken is this um, a, no this so. is not this is not even uh uh i'm following biblical custom this is not this practice wasn't talked about in the bible it's not talked about in the torah this was something this is part of their tradition again now to your point i'm not going to poo poo on there once upon a time they did this for as a means of necessity like i get that there are people that used to eat food fish from the ground because they didn't have a refrigerator i get that we're not in that place no more so i feel like yo let's use common sense here you don't have to suck the blood no more your mouth doesn't need to be on any child's penises especially in today's time um, we're looking at the and i'm looking at you catholics in terms of the high instances of child molestation and stuff like that we just don't need to practice that no more we don't need to introduce that we don't need to go and walk in that direction you know, go to a hospital and it wants and a sign of that is the new pope looking to allow um priests to get married priests to get married not those that are already in existence in um walking currently in the faith um and practicing and are not married but those yeah. new priests that are coming in um because they do realize that there's a shortcoming in that practice yeah so that, that's all i'm saying I, for the parent um i believe you are incredibly dumb for allowing another grown man in this day and time because i'm, I'm i will give you that um uh, i can't if they did this a hundred years ago as a means of protecting the child yeah, I don't know. it's hard. It's still hard for me. But it wasn't necessarily a means of protecting the child. That part of the the circumcision was performed, but then the second part, when they actually suck the blood off of the penis, um, maybe just that portion of the ritual could be updated. Um, but it doesn't, I think, make the practice null and void as far as what they believe. Yo, I have to I have to do some history on that because uh, just because it was part of a uh, faith system doesn't make it right. This is one of those things where uh, my logic has to supersede any type of tradition. I believe if there's a faith system that negatively um, introduces some things, and it might be a it might this might be a perception because it's kind of like breastfeeding where uh, some people believe that breastfeeding should only be done in this particular area because exposing the breast, blah, 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 blah. It might be a perception thing. You know what I mean? It might be my way of me of sexualizing the act, but I just can't 
man, grown man, baby. I, I just well, I thought I don't we separate think that. Circumcision is a, a cause of surviving or not surviving. Okay. Breastfeeding is nourishment for survival for a child. So I don't even think that that could even in the be same category. At in the same category, mm -hmm. but I do agree that a lot of people just probably look at it in a, um, the form of sexualizing what's going on instead of this is done for whatever the belief system might be. Hey yo, if you're a rabbi, stop putting your mouth on on little boys' penises. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you know, we. I'm, I'm trying to be intellectual with you, Bill. You, you're far more balanced in this. I'm sorry. Just stop putting your mouth on yeah. on little baby. I mean, pieces. I don't. I don't agree with the practice at all. Yeah. But um, I can't say that it doesn't have some kind of validity within their their religion. I don't know. Mm, I'm. I, I, and I'm not. I'm not the dude that like. If if I don't believe in it it's not valid or it's not I'm not that person but we have too much we have too many statistics we have too many instances of in particular men uh, being perverts essentially well I don't even look at it like that I just look at it from the aspect of a life was lost and I think it merits looking into that um, situation as to why the little boy died yeah. You know, and it said they were twins. One of them died, the other one did not. Yeah. So what was going on? Um, yeah. In so that situation. I, you know, I didn't even touch on that part. And in, in closing, uh, we're wrapping the subject, subject up. As a rabbi, again, now if I was to pull away from him putting his actual mouth on a baby's penis, <laughs> the fact that he has a disease. And he's doing this like that to me that you're really, you doubling up on the jacked up meter like. Yo. Yes, that would definitely be a concern. Yo, so it, I I know the trend they're changing the law now, but you used to be able to get charged. I know I probably wouldn't be an Orthodox Jew after my child died with an, <laughs> under the you you I don't know if you joke or not, but yeah, I. No, I'm serious. Yeah, it would definitely yeah. cause me to question what I believe in and why. Well, you know, to be fair, we shoot, we can do a whole lot of. And I'm talking about in Christianity too. There's a whole lot of things that will cause people to question. Um, in ca in times of things failing, but again, uh, we have to be able to exercise. I believe God has given us free will in order to use logic to keep ourselves out of harm's way. Uh, a dumb example, but a long time ago, Jim Jones, who was a cult leader back, I think he was in San Francisco, and he took his whole congregation, three, four hundred people to Africa, and made them drink the Kool Aid, and they all died out there. Some, I know, I know the cult mentality, I know the 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 brainwashing that happens, but at some point before the brainwashing kicked in, somebody had to question themselves: Why am I drinking Kool Aid and you're not? <laughs> Because we didn't drink it. Because I said so. Yeah. So, no, we're not playing that game. So, if I'm an Orthodox Jew, and again, somebody says, and it's not supported. So, every, I believe every religion has a set of principles that's written down that everyone follows. If it's not in that set category, for Christians, it's the Bible. For Jews, the Torah. For Muslims, it's the Quran. If it's not set forth in there, um, why are we doing this? What, what, what is the purpose of the tradition? You know what I mean? Why was this tradition even established in the first place? You and I, amongst ourselves, discussing well, it might have been a health thing and da 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 da. But yo, again, rabbis, keep your little mouths off little boys' penises. Just it, <laughs> it just ain't cool. But uh, speaking about dumb things, our last story: we have a young lady, 19 years old, in Nav Navasota, Texas. Who is an expiring model? This was. Was. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh. That's not right. But, um, yeah. Anyway, she um decided to take pictures by the train tracks, which I've seen this on Facebook plenty of times of people. They love the background and the scenery. The unfortunate part Can about it. Can we use a railroad track that's not active? <laughs> 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 I mean, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> right. But that would just make sense. Right. People are dumb, man. Why are you. 
how do you get hit by a train? This is not like a train doesn't yeah. move sixty miles an hour. It's no, she. Well, this is not a passenger train. This is a freight. She oh. moved out of the way of one train and got and hit <laughs> by the other train. <laughs> That's what happened. Yo! So, People. and she died on the way to the hospital. So, it's not much to really pull out of this particular subject. I I'm, think it's very tragic. She, three days shy of being 20, just had gotten pregnant. Obviously, she was engaged. That was the sad part. Yeah, yeah, she was pregnant. Mm-hmm. She had uh, just found out. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think it's very, very tragic because you want a pretty background. Yeah. I wonder if that's going to be <laughs> the background. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, and so um, when I and so when I think about outside of her getting hit by a train and how did that happen, the photographer. I would have been very upset. Did he, he was he that focused that he didn't hear nothing? Because you know, I mean, maybe they didn't toot the the engine or whatever. So I doubt you that. Can hear him, they because you know, they hit that thing all the way, um, almost a mile down. I you, mean, there is a distance that you can like. There's too many. Tell, hey, a train is coming. If you don't know it's a train, you know something's coming. The ground starts shaking. Right. I mean, something had to alert you. Let's let's say she she was completely in the zone. Him being a photographer, it's kind of like being an A seat driver. If you're driving late at night um, and you're in a passenger seat, well, you're a second pair of eyes for the person just in case they get sleepy or whatnot. If you're on a train tracks, I would think that there's an understood risk that you might get hit by something. So, yo. You're supposed to be in charge of keeping that person. Your, this is your subject. These are your. This is your portfolio. Keep and her this safe. This is why we stick to backdrops. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do the train backdrop. We're not going to actually sit on the train tracks. And again, I don't see nothing wrong with taking pictures on the train tracks. It's just, I just don't get how you didn't see a train coming. And I, I don't, do because the train tracks are for trains. So stay off. <laughs> well, we can't use that logic, Gabriel, because people take pictures in front of waterfalls and rivers and oceans, and those things are dangerous too. You know. Yes, the water is just gonna jump out of the body of water and just drown you. <laughs> it has happened. It has happened. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, well, I mean, if the waves, if you're like in the midst of like jumbo waves, yes, let me take a picture with this typhoon today. <laughs> <laughs> take a picture with a typhoon. <laughs> You know, I mean, how how reasonable is that? It's the same thing, like with the the guys that just recently passed um, in Texas, storm chasing. It's yeah, a yeah, storm. Yeah, yeah. There is a risk with that, you know. And in, in this sad situation, the lady she was trying to make a career on the train tracks. I will have to know this. Just trains and modeling didn't make sense at this point there was a there was another young lady this wasn't a modeling thing this was um i think this happened like two years ago and i actually can understand how this happened she she was uh getting ready to get on a plane and uh she was coincidentally i think she was a model she wasn't modeling but she was a model and she had uh i think she was getting on the plane but the propellers were spinning but you know how the propellers spin so fast that you can't see it mm -hmm. she didn't see the propellers so she walked right into the spinning pro uh, propellers and uh, of course chopped her face up she survived she lived and she got a face transplant and she actually she looked decent like she was a pretty girl beforehand and then after the transplant um, it was obvious but it wasn't like uh, grotesque I don't know a better word to use but it, it wasn't to me in, my, in, in the case of you walking into a moving propeller like a war mutilation like what we see yeah it wasn't it didn't look like that to me it looked like okay you did have a surgery but you know you're recuperating that's how i looked at it so but yeah she moved into a moving propeller on the airplane so like i i can actually understand that a little more than a moving train because i those things do move fast it's but the sound of it she wasn't trying to take a picture next to the propeller she wasn't trying yeah no it was, she, it, was, she, it was just an honest mistake yeah yeah and so uh ladies and gentlemen uh, the theme is don't take pictures on active train tracks we're not saying not to because you know sometimes you just gotta get that shot there was another model did you see that at the rush i think she was russian where um she was holding on to the photographer's hand hanging from the top of the building 
Did you see that? No. She did that, you know, and they talked about it on social media. She did it on purpose. No harnesses, no safety devices. She literally was holding at the top of a 20-story building. He's holding her with one hand, taking a picture with the other. She's, you know. I don't know. You strong dude, baby. But I don't got that much trust that you hold me. <laughs> <laughs> and I won't fall off the side of the building. First of all, I'm not even going to put you in that you kind know. of position. That's. Uh, I want mattresses. <laughs> I want trampoline, barrier thingies, nets, everything. Yeah. I don't even have confidence in those circus tight line walks that folks be doing for acrobatics. With the real mess on that joint. Yeah, I don't even have faith in that. Well, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back. You're listening to the Hawk and Bill podcast. Woo-woo. I, I'm used to saying on 30parkwood.com, but that's not up right now. So, so we will, we'll find a platform for this on YouTube. Hi, this is Regina with Simone B. Catering, and you're listening to the Hawk and Bell podcast. Slow down. Turn it up, speakers on loud and the bass is up I'm on fire, can't cool me off now Hold up, turn me up Turn me 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 up, turn me up what it be, swag turned up, same when you see, sack town, you know what it be, my life turned up, a- a- ain't no doubt in me, down in me, kill a nigga chest, call a heartburn, killing my flesh, put it in the arm, snap back, get chucks with a v-neck, my big bang, you say that I'm blessed, yes I am, cause I get it from my father, the one that sits on the throne, the others can't about her, can't about her, I rap until the fullest got my beat, uh, give it up, yes sir, yes that is enough, slow down, turn it up, Speaker sound loud and the bass is up Boy, I'm on fire, can't cool me off now Hold up, turn me up Turn me 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 up, Somebody go get the DJ Tell him the song should be on replay Cause he, cause he running like a relay And I'm turned up to the ceiling, don't you feel me? Yo, 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 Cause I'm so out of this world like Pluto If, 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 if you ain't out, this is how I get out Rapping the king, boy, yeah, we bout to blizz out t t t t something like a bomb, bro So I'm heading off, setting up the lawn, bro Hot blazing, New Orleans station Boy, I'm on fire till your favorite session play this Hot boy wonder, miracle size wonder Living water flowing, everybody going under Don't talk about Christ, I can't help it Living water swimming, you can say I Michael felt it Slow down, turn it up Speaker sound loud and the bass is up I'm on fire, can't cool me off now Hold up, turn me up Hey, turn me up 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 Give me this word if you want it now or later. This word is sweet and it's like in my teeth like now or later. For you, we're with with cowards and you ain't like Johnny Romo. Sometimes I like to rap fast, sometimes it's like, hey, hey, now, hey, now, you're a tall star. Tall so star. Do what I say, do don't fall star. Hey, 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 hey. I know this beat go hard. My whole team screaming loud on one car. Turn up. Slow down, yeah. turn it up. Speaker sound loud and the bass is up. I'm on fire, can't cool me off now. Hold up. Yeah. I ain't turning down nothing but my cop. Want that truth? Cop. 
I'm trying to give it to the world before it burn up. I only know one way. Turn up. Turn up. Turn up. Turn up. Real cool cat, never move on. But this my second time around, now I'm in my zone. And if you entertain, I hope you entertain. How we rock for the rock like it ain't a thing. Ah, it's still DBGSPH. If you was thinking we gon' stop, homie, we ain't. We ain't. BT, BT, ESPN. Why? But they don't mean a thing if he don't let me in. It's more than a movement of music, more than just something we doing. Living this OS, our lifestyle. Plus, we neighborhood hope dealing burps to the hood gon' fill us. Cause hope is something they need. And right now, right now. Ah, ah. So turn down for what? I wait for your reply. He died and he rose and he chose me, which shows me I cannot be denied. I ain't turning down nothing but my cop. Want that truth? Holler. I'm trying to give it to the world before it burn up. I only know one way. Turn up. 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 I really ain't turning down nothing but my collar. Uh -huh. Feel me before you hear me, young scholar. Uh -huh. If Peter Piper picked a pair of peppers all up in your garden, would you guard it? Put your life or would you pardon him? Oh, no, no, they started him. Here we go again with metaphoric type symbolism. Huh. I can't help it, I'm a helper like some tuna for your hunger. So turn me up like I was playing tuba for drummers in a marching band. I came in, I saw and I conquered, okay. I know who I am, if I don't, I just pray. There's a harp in my heart, so like David, I play. And if that's not your pleasure, okay, then just shake. I'm about to bake it up, I know I'm way to trust, and that's in God. I'm in the jungle with a tiger, and he got the lesser odds. I'm less involved with the perpetrators bumping on their gums. Really out here in these streets, and I let the song thump, lie, lie, I ain't turning down nothing but my cow. Want that truth? I'm trying to give it to the world before it burn up. I only know one way. Turn up. 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 Hey, hey, fizzle in the billet, divorce on, yep. get in where you fit in, it's a war zone, some of them are flipping on a mission, hit the war wrong, now they getting they feelings for the feelings, ah. you ain't know I'm for the most high God, I don't talk about the war, let my toes not pop, I'm a Christian, homie, I am on my job, but they stay I ride like I'm with that bow tie mob, uh. he the ruler, uh. We the doers, move the word like Kara on you vain, we the shooters. They saying I'm the truth, but you sure be the truest. And the truth is, I'm just trying to do it like you do it. Yelling God over money, I did chase cash. With a benefit in the pen on a bed straight mad. Cause it came at a price that I just can't match. I ain't trying to have my kids pay that. G O M. I ain't turning down nothing but my cow. Want that truth? Holler. I'm trying to give it to the world before it burn up. I only know one way. Turn up. Turn up. Turn up. Yeah. Uh. I like giving old school records new flows. Saturday. Yeah. I like giving old school records new flows. Yeah. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. I like giving old school records new flows. Uh. Yeah. Can I bust a rhyme? I'm a rapper, not your average. I come from another kind. Yeah. The way I drop it, they wanna go use the giant number two. See the signs, I turn the water to wine. I took a trip to Kenya, then I saw the Maasai. Yeah. Took a trip to SA, I was chilling with lines. Yeah. Think I'm lying, check my Twitter timeline. You're gonna be finding it chilling around sometime November 29. <laughs> my savior came, yeah. put his hands where they eyes couldn't see with a touch, it get healed or blind. Then he coming back like a spine. I'm seeing lies, the enemy trying to sell me. I tell him I'm not buying. Not buying. And when I do, I be wildin'. Not putting Christ in the center like Andrew Bynum Denying him, but now I'm relying on him My mind was the kind that inspired violence I swear I needed asylums From New York to Milan, I be styling on him yeah. OG Baxter, harder than margarito Hands wrapped in plaster Hold up, let me ask ya, ask ya Who you chasing after? The guy that we rap about or just a rapper? That's some whack stuff like calling whoever you podcast your pastor Growing pains feel better after While you're going through them like how long they gonna last for? If you wasn't chastised, then I ask ya Are you a legitimate? Me child of the master, you want that? I think not. So get them hands high, let me see you rock. They put their hands uh, on the sky. Be careful who you worship when you wave them at concerts. They yeah. wave them from side to side, but please don't no. get it twisted. They put their hands in the sky. Be careful who you worship when you wave them at concerts. Yeah. They wave them from side to side, but please don't get it twisted.
don't get it twisted yeah. I wanna be in it, but not of it When the record starts spinning, the feeling it starts coming Remembering the days of my sin and even loved it But now I think about what I did and I feel disgusting This Busta Rhymes record that I'm busting Is a testament to what the father did when I trusted him Don't you hear how everything is changing now The snares, the kicks, even my lifestyle It don't sound like anything I started with Let's transform metaphor in the art of it Hip-hop is the culture, I am a part of it But I answer to the one that's in charge of it If I offended you, brother I hope you pardon it The mission is to meet them where they are That's the heart of it God takes what the devil intended for evil And use it for good of those that he calls his people If he redeemed you and your heart that's deceitful Then he can do it to a beat too And we get that beef on the methods As long as we agree to reach peeps with the message That he redeems people and beats I'm free from the sentence of death That I wasn't death with a talent Welcome back to the Hawk and Bell podcast the story. Just... I didn't want it to be a religious focus thing. Mm. As far as from our perspective of religion. Whatever. That's their fault, baby. No, we putting you in the mouth, <laughs> little boys. All right, we're back. You're listening to the Hawk and Bell podcast on my YouTube channel. Go on to look under G Hawk because my wife. Miss Bell, Lady Bell, Lady BZ. <laughs> All right. <laughs> she said that's where we should go. So yeah, that's what we'll do. Um, so our next segment. Everybody plays a fool sometimes. Take it away. Baby. <laughs> you y'all can tell she ain't worldly. No sanctified folk. Everybody plays a fool, and the question is, if you're bold enough to answer, what is the dumbest thing you have ever done for a girlfriend or boyfriend? And of course, I ask people in North Carolina as well as California, and I want to give a shout out to everybody who answered the question. Um, I don't have my California answers. I know um, one of my friends, Keisha, the Keisha, she said, uh, I actually remember hers. She said that she let a boyfriend borrow... <laughs> she let a boyfriend borrow her car, take her to work, run errands, and pick her up from work while he sat at home and played video games. That was the dumbest thing she did. Uh, we have another person who, uh, shout out to my man, Dowling. <laughs> he hit a girl with his car. No, the hold on, that's the dumbest. You said the dumbest thing that what one ever did for their significant other, and that's what he did for her. He hit her with the car. With the car. Was he doing her a favor? <laughs> wow. I don't think he understood the question. <laughs> uh, shout out to my man Big D. Uh, I would say I actually remembered another one, other than giving the person my time, but um, purchasing a TV. I wasn't going to bring that up, them. but yeah, that's something. I think that was pretty. Incredibly dumb. Yeah, dumb. Incredibly dumb. And you had known that dude for how long? I don't remember. It was, but it wasn't long. Within a year? Yeah, yeah. And this is back in the day. T- TVs are a little more affordable now, now that flat screens are more prevalent. But back then, to get a flat screen, man, that was like getting a PS4 yeah, in 1994. Yeah, $900. <laughs> for that TV. And you was in college. I was in college. So you didn't really have the income to be doing that. I and really, really didn't. Shout out to that dude. He, you know, he cleaned up. You know, where's my... Where I never saw the TV either other than they had picked it out in the store. That's what's tragic. Boy. Uh, so let me ask you this before we go to the other one. If you're in a relationship, right? I see it. If you're in a relationship and you buy something, we're not talking about trinkets, something of worth, something that has, has a little bit of, of money attached to it. Do you get that back when the relationship's over with? I don't know. Does everybody get their, their engagement ring back? When yeah. They so, so engagement? I kind of put that in a different category, though. I personally believe that if you break off, the person who breaks off the engagement ring, engagement needs to give the ring up. So, if, in other words, if the woman says, I don't want to get married anymore, she needs to get, I believe she needs to give the ring back. If the guy says, no, I don't want to get married anymore, uh, then I believe you forfeited 
your now I wouldn't know why a female wants to keep that after he breaks up with it, but oh, I keep it and then pawn it or something of the nature. That's I mean, that's what um many women have done. They've sold their rings and stuff for the money. So you would keep you would keep the ring if I was to break it up with you. I don't know if I could really get much from it. Oh! <laughs> you do realize we're recording, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I think in our case, the sentimental value of the ring it supersedes the yo, actual money. Yo, 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 don't even sound right. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> mm. I mean, it was what your first paycheck, so. Yeah, you know. I, I mean, I'm not a bitch. You know, yeah, it, it was what it was. That's is what I can afford, and you know, it, it was definitely more about the thought <laughs> than the worth. You know what I mean? But going back to the the Diamani story. Um, no, I mean, no, we're not going. We don't touch on that because I feel like because he went, he did go to court behind that. And it wasn't, and I laugh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not laughing because of, there was, it wasn't about abuse in the situation. She wanted to borrow his car. He said no. He got in the car. She jumped on top of the car to stop him <laughs> from driving away. And so he had to prove in court that he didn't just run her over. It was that she was trying to stop him from driving. It was his car. And, uh... For people to understand the type of females that do this type of thing, you have to live in Jacksonville, North Carolina, which is, to me, the twilight zone when it comes to females in particular, because they operate completely different than I've been in the rest of the world or the rest of the United States. The rules are different. I don't know what makes you think that you're going to win against a moving car. <laughs> That's what I get. I think... No, I'm not going. I don't know. Yeah, I, don't I mean, know. you know, you hear folks scratching up cars or hitting it with baseball bats and stuff like that, but the car's not on and moving. Yeah, but you're not you're not thinking clearly. Like you, I'm sure you've been in that state. You, you're so emotional that um, you're not being rational. You're you just want the Many times. you want the mission to be accomplished. So I I, I kind of do understand that part. Uh, we had another person. Shout out to Cassie. But it was his car. <laughs> I was trying to skip over that part. <laughs> it was his car. Um, well, actually, shout out to Paul, Paul Murray. You know Paul, who was a co-host with me. At I think he wrote, "I tried to cut a live wire with a knife because she wanted a jump rope." Now, this is he was a young. <laughs> 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 Paul, you just lost a couple. Of points. <laughs> the second thing he did, he said, I, the second thing I did was get my ear pierced because she said I would look cute with it. Uh, this was in the eighties. I mean, but you could take that out, so I don't really see a loss. But cutting a live wire, he almost lost his life, so he she can jump. Almost lost on his jump life. <laughs> wow. Uh, Bay Holloway, this is Tiffany. Uh, used to work at a radio station. She wrote, she let them steal over a grand worth of items without calling the cops sooner. I don't, there's a lot of details about this situation. Um, and I was having dialogue with her on Facebook. It wasn't that she knew that her then boyfriend, she knew that he was stealing. She found out a little bit later. And so she, just, I guess she was calling herself dumb because she didn't recognize that that's what he he because she was she was writing on Facebook somebody keeps breaking in and stealing my because she got roommates too uh, in an apartment so I guess she thought it was the roommates that was taken from her and so everybody in the comments you need to call the police and get your roommates arrested blah 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 and it wasn't the roommates it was her own boyfriend that was stealing so I think she's well, saying well generally it's somebody close to you and when certain jobs and stuff are done unfortunately that's what happened I mean yeah. Uh, this is Cassie. Cassie said uh, delayed getting her education and I asked her to explain that. She said that it was based on what we talked about getting married and moving so I was going to wait till we moved to start. So, and she never got married. So I Well, I kind of understand that. We have a mutual friend that um, stayed in college an extra year so that her and her boyfriend then um could graduate together not to leave him behind in college and her move on with her life and um yeah i i believe that's incredibly dumb if you're paying out of pocket if you like you know if you're not paying for it 
you know, I, do what you do. You know, it's on grants or whatever. But if you're taking out a loan or you're paying just straight out of pocket for college, which is thousands of dollars a semester or a year, you know. No, it wasn't a loan. Yeah. So you. <laughs> but even then, why would you pay your own money? Or invest your own money. I mean, she could have continued going to the same school on a grad level. Just finish the bachelor's and continue on to grad school. Sorry. And she could have halfway been through grad school by the time he he was done. And they would have still been at the same college. That penis! <laughs> that joy was talking. Like, yeah. She was learning to pipe. <laughs> she was like, I'm going to stay another year for that. Um, <laughs> and I... I didn't share my dumbest thing in terms of I've, and I honestly now I've done a lot of dumb stuff in my life just dumb I've absolutely been dumb but as it pertains to relationships I couldn't think of one I couldn't think of I, I'm sure I have I'm sure you can think of something there's only two things there's two things that I'm thinking of one the girl wasn't my girlfriend so I don't know if that counts. I've done uh, okay. <laughs> so I, I never told you the story. I uh, I, I kind of paid for sex. I kind of did. <laughs> what? I kind of did. It was um. Hold on. So it was my first month in Jacksonville, North Carolina. Shout out to Camp with June, and uh, we had went to a club. And this is the, I, I told you about that. She was the oldest person I've ever been with sexually. She was like 47. And I was 22, something like around that age group. And I met her at the club, exchanged numbers and whatever. And I called her up maybe a couple of days later. We went on a date. Now, I already knew that I was in there. I already knew that we was going to you know, have sex and all that. But I you know, took her to the movies took her to you know we got we ate at I think Applebee's or something like that like I knew it was a done deal but somehow we got on a conversation about things that we've never done sexually and so uh, I mentioned something <laughs> that I've never done and she was like well I'll let you do that and so you know my ear is like oh where and she was like yeah it'll just cost $60 and so <laughs> and so I was like huh huh <laughs> Let's try it out. And so, uh, yeah, and and I did that. And then after the fact, when as I was driving home, one I tallied up all the money that I spent on this particular date. And I was like, did I yeah, just? Yeah, I would have been like your meal, <laughs> the ride here, the ride back, yeah, my yeah. time, yeah, yeah, all that, all that. Yeah, you all sold that. yourself short. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, and I was in a bad place in my life at that time anyway so I could see how it happened but don't justify it <laughs> it was dumb <laughs> it was dumb but she wasn't my girlfriend it was just a, a one time encounter thing and you know the second thing I did the girl wasn't my girlfriend either and I gave the worst story up front you know I should I guess I'm supposed to flip it but I'm just talking to the top of my head uh, it was a girl at Cal State LA shout out to LaRon he was going to Cal State LA and I used to go visit him after I got kicked out of Grambling. I used to stay in his room and there were some girls that were living upstairs. You know, it's just like, was ECU set up? No, ECU wasn't set up like that. Just like your brother, the way they got the suite situation, four rooms and one bathroom. State, NC State? NC State, yeah. yeah. So it, Cal State LA was set up the exact same way. They looked like many apartments. Really, really cool. And um, they just had uh, uh, community bathrooms. They had two bathrooms. So, the guys were down here in their own little situation and the girls were upstairs on the second floor and it was one girl that I thought was cute upstairs but these girls were known around in terms of like they was cute so it was popular so I go up there shooting my shot but you know I'm not on no pimping or nothing like that I, I was genuinely interested in her but she was she was on the she was from Inglewood she was on a different pl uh, playing field and uh <laughs> this is embarrassing this is more embarrassing than me paying for sex <laughs> to me anyway that's how my morals are she said that she was tired of reading a book for her class so she wanted me to read the book for her mind you all her sweet mates are in the same living room that we are so I'm here I am kind of reading a story tale a whole chapter in front of all so I can hear people giggling like look at this because I, I felt like I was being sent 
like I'm reading a book. She's sitting there. She wasn't paying attention. She just it was a power play to see if she can get me uh, to read that chapter. And uh, after the fact, after I, I did it, and after the fact, as I walked out the door, all her was girl, <laughs> and made belly laughing all throughout that joint. And I felt like I was. They had you well. Yeah, yeah. They and I, man, I felt like it's. And that was always my but fear. She probably didn't pass because she wasn't paying attention to the story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she wrote me a letter. I was in boot camp, but you know, whatever. Um, but it was situations like that that I guess that's why I, in terms of my relationships, I try to avoid um, doing anything or saying anything embarrassing. When you met me, I was that way. And yeah, I think I got the short enough stick. You were already traumatized by that point, huh? I, I definitely was. But when I met you, well, as we were dating a lot of that, now all of it's gone, I believe. Uh, but as you and I were dating, most of that started to go away. But one thing, like one rule I had was I never gave any girl any money, mm -hmm. you know, outside of paying for sex. <laughs> Outside of that, but she wasn't my girl, like I said. But um, it, it's in terms of my girl because I didn't want to be a sucker. I didn't, and, and, and again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about I was in Jacksonville, and I and though these a lot of these females were in multiple relationships because it was true. I guess that was the difference in the environment, Jacksonville versus everywhere else. It's a marine town, and so the male to female ratio was obscenely uh, uneven, as well as a lot of these females were married, and you know. There was playing a game, so double dipping. Yeah, there was double dipping. So I never wanted to be part of that particular group. So when I met you, um, I was holding my cards tight, and you proved yourself to be very genuine. To the point, I think you and I had an argument one time. We was at a Mexican restaurant, and uh, I didn't have any money, and you paid for it, and I had a real big issue behind that, and I had asked you who's paying for that out loud, and you, and you was like, "That's very embarrassing." Don't you know da 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 da? And you pay for the meal. A lot, as a matter of fact, even prior to that, you. Used I mean, to, what were you gonna wash dishes in the back? Or something? <laughs> I know. I just wasn't gonna eat. You know, I was just because we was there with all our friends, and you know, it was a social moment. But I kind of had that mentality, like you know, just like I'm not gonna give you the money. I wasn't expecting you to do anything for me, but you kept extending yourself um, repeatedly. Even the first day that we met. You, uh, when you and Angie, uh, at that time, that was uh, her friend that was uh, sharing an apartment, you all cooked meals for us and, you know, provided this, that, and the third. You all offered for a place for me and my guy, shout out to Vic, for us to stay. Those things had an effect on me. Like, no, all females aren't about playing games and whatnot. Even though I'm sure you, I'm, I'm sure you had your games and you had a mentality, but in the moment, uh, it was authentic. And I picked up. Yeah, on I was at a point in my life where I was reaching rock bottom at that point too, and I was done with, I guess, the dating scene. Yeah, I was really looking for someone genuine as well. Um, it, 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 it's so, amazing. It's amazing. Know, yeah, it's amazing how. Uh, yeah, being authentic holds a lot more weight. Than I think anything. that I was pretty authentic with all my relationships. Yeah, I let them Spoken see. like a true player. No, when I was with I you, I was with you. <laughs> For real. For real. I mean, I used to say what men come every five minutes, just like buses in New York. Yeah, so I didn't have that kind of mentality. I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't trying to jump from female to female, but no, that wasn't the idea. But I that mean, was the idea. That's that's what the I'm idea. I'm not going to sit here and be held up. By somebody that doesn't have it together and doesn't have anything to offer. Right. So what changed your mind? As far as what? Men coming every five minutes. If that was your mentality, what changed? Um, because you couldn't get married carrying that mentality. What changed? I got on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, well, I'm generally, I'm generally asking. You got on the bus, but something inside you had to change. Something you there's something about your processing that had to be different. What changed in your processing? Mm. Off the cuff, hitting her with that deep one. He throws a strike. I don't know. 
I mean, definitely there was definitely a tug at my heart um, to look at the situation or the relationship in a different light than any other relationship I had looked at. Um, and to be honest, I didn't have any other relationship that went beyond the superficial. Right. Um, you talking about ever been, you, or are you talking about adult life? Ever. Okay. Um, I don't know. Intellectually, we could vibe on a lot of different levels that I couldn't vibe with anybody else. Um, you didn't try to hold me back when I told you I had different aspirations or different things um, that I wanted to achieve in life. You yeah. were very encouraging and I had never met anyone like that. Most people I had um, been interested in really didn't care or wanted to stifle me and say, no, you're just going to be for my purpose. Yeah. Uh, so I think part of that, too, was the age that you all were at. Um, young people, and when I say young, I'm talking about early 20s, late 20s, tend to be very selfish. Uh, we're well, very I mean, the guys I had dated were older, so I can't say okay. that that was really it. Okay, so you just don't shoot down my little. <laughs> right, it got started. Um, well, can I say then men tend to be selfish about what they want? Would that be a fair assessment in your in your experience? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the only difference in terms of the way I saw you, because um, there were a lot of negative experiences you and I shared, was that uh, I think because I was broken. I didn't take the same mentality that I, like I was hardened for a little bit and that's why I turned to alcohol and drugs and to numb you know the pain that I was going through emotionally but I never want to see somebody else experience heartbreak or experience emotional hey, stop you what do you mean breaking my heart <laughs> <laughs> you chose the strip club oh. <laughs> and your guys over me <laughs> Let's 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 put perspective on that. <laughs> I didn't want to hurt you, but I've I've in and and that's funny because yeah, in our relationship, I've made bad dis I made decisions um, without having a clear view. like I didn't understand love. You know, I guess we could talk about that before we get out of here. Um, I didn't understand I love. Most people know until you're in the trenches together yeah. I don't think you really realize what it means to be in that situation yeah no I had I had one I didn't know how to maintain a serious relationship and my priorities were definitely different so my priorities back then was uh, my homies over everything a female especially was not going to take the place of, of, of my homeboy so when you you know I think you and I were on the phone and you was asking me where I was going and at that time I was going to strip clubs very frequently and when you questioned me about that I felt like I didn't have any tolerance for anybody to tell me what they think I'm going to do, especially no female. I didn't look at you as this is somebody who I not even I'm not even talking about I'm thinking about marriage. And truth be told, I didn't care that you were going to the strip club. For me, it was just a concern of seeing the t deterioration from the time I had met you to the point where you were at. Yeah. And legit, it was kind of just over the winter um, Christmas break. Yep. That I mean, I saw a definite decline, and um, I was very concerned about that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I wasn't in a I wasn't in a healthy place, and um, I think the strength of a person's love when a person is authentic, going back to that word, and a person is genuine, and they have honest intentions towards you, it's something that's hard to forget, and I think that helped bring me back and bring the relationship back into perspective i didn't have a lot of patience back then i didn't have a lot of tolerance but because it was because i didn't want to be a fool i didn't want to be played i didn't want to get my heart broken i was does, though. yeah yeah i didn't want to take any chances and so instead of me just fully giving you my whole heart and like yo you know let's make this work i'm, I'm not gonna give you opportunity to do that so you know i'm gonna cut we're not gonna i'm not even gonna give you a leeway and then once i wised up and Hey, tough love is nice sometimes, though. It is. It is. <laughs> I, and I'm, I'm only saying that now, going through everything that we've been through in a relationship, but it, it took a lot of time to build up. I had to build up my tolerance, too, 
uh, it was another situation. And again, and it's embarrassing on my part where we was talking about the wave cap. And you didn't want me wearing a wave cap, going to Walmart, whatnot. That little remark, I mean, there's some nuances there also, but it's, it's nevertheless, the big picture is um, you. I was going to work and I got upset because you didn't want me wearing a wave cap going to work. <laughs> and to think about that, like, yo, it was for my benefit. But again, it was you telling me what to do. And I didn't want that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I do got. I, got, I wasn't telling you. I asked you not to. Yeah. yeah. Well, th- I gotta give another perspective on this. At this time, I didn't have a place to stay, and she had paid rent for me for in a room for thirty days. She had paid this. She had gotten off work. She was working at a credit union at one point. This is gonna make me look like a total jerk. She had gotten off work at a credit union, came and picked me up 15 minutes, around about 20 minutes, including traffic, to take me, because I was working third shift at Walmart, and on the way of her getting off her work, picking me up and taking me to work, is when we got in this argument and me being offended that you told me not to, or asked me not to wear a wave cap. So, I, I, was, compl- I was completely in the wrong, and so... I was ready to break up with you then because of my interpretation of what you was telling me and my understanding. And then when we but I don't think you were wrong in. I think you were wrong in the way you approach the situation. My approach. I don't think you were wrong in perceiving yeah, yeah, yeah. the perspective I was coming from. Well, it, it was, it was always my approach. My, I was, I was, uh, the, I was ready to pull the trigger really, really fast. And that was something, again, I had to learn to get away from because I was scared of being hurt. And so this is the second time. I, I'm not going to tell the first story, but then. So once once I got to Walmart and I'm working, you had came back and you came back for the specific purpose. Big shout out to my homegirl, Les. I think I was in that parking lot for 20 minutes com- talking with her. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. She was helping me kind of calm down. Okay. So you and you came in and you apologized. You didn't have to. Because I was at that moment to either I'm going forward or it's done. Yeah. Well, when you apologized, that was that was a very humbling part for me because you didn't you didn't have to. And it, again, this was the second time you had shown uh, integrity and authenticness and being genuine about your feelings and like you really like you didn't you wasn't trying to hurt me so the thing that i was trying to protect myself from you that's not what you were doing but i was perceiving it that way and so intellectually i i, I felt it emotionally took a lot because you know i don't apologize i know that so it took a lot for me i know that and, and then in front of everybody yeah 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 that was that was so I, and i believe god has a way because again that was in front. Of, that was in front of anybody. I wasn't embarrassed though. I was actually like, "Yo, you got to do better, man. This this isn't." It's moments like that that reminded me, "Yo, this is what love looks like, and this is how you should be." In terms of um being uh long not long lasting. What's the word? The longevity. No, love is kind. Love is patient. Love is. I guess patient is the word. You got to be patient with people, even when they hurt your feelings or when you're emotionally, you're scarred. I don't know who told me, but I do believe it more so now than ever. Hurt people, hurt people. Hurt people, yeah, definitely. Uh, our pastor, um, Bishop Dobson, he told me one time, when this is when we got married, he said, uh, never be on your last string when you're with your sp- in, in, in relation to your spouse. Never say that you were on your last nerve and your last dream because this is the person who you've made a commitment to. Never allow yourself to get to that point. So then we have a gang of stories that can lead up to that point in terms of learning moments of building your patience and building your tolerance because love is it's, it's hard work. It's a lot that goes. It's a lot of self um, sacrifice and things that you got to put aside in order to make this thing work. And um, I definitely want to congratulate you in that to the point that we're making a podcast because she does not do podcasts, <laughs> <laughs> but doing this in terms of supporting me and our adventure and um, trying to build together. So that's all. That's all we still got. Still working at it, y'all. Still working. Because that's definitely work. Yeah. So this is a is a relatively quick podcast. Uh, Bill didn't like it so far. 
she thought that the discussion could be more in depth but when you're doing it for the first time these are you gotta these are how the the little uncomfortable moments the all the stuff that you thought you was gonna talk about that don't come out it's because the microphone's on once the microphone goes up you're gonna oh i should have said this that and that. <laughs> it happens you know because it, it happens to me all the time and then uh how the the you don't want to sound stupid in the ears of the listeners because of maybe we don't articulate our thoughts you know the best way whatnot this isn't car conversation i don't rocking. think it's for well for me about sounding stupid i think it's just more so being misunderstood yeah, yeah. Because I can't give them the whole entire context via mic as far as why I'm reasoning or thinking this way. That definitely They don't happens. know the history. You know, I feel like that um, when I'm preaching where I might exp- like I might introduce an idea. I'm really good at that. I'll introduce an idea and don't develop that idea fully mm-hmm. and move on to the next subject. And so the listener is like wait i don't get where you're coming from with left that them hanging. left them hanging so you know if we left y'all hanging we apologize that's definitely not our intention but uh suck it up buttercup subscribe <laughs> leave a comment below <laughs> shout out to our daughter uh she's learning that also so is there a redeeming factor as it pertains to this particular episode what can we learn from this don't be dumb don't walk into propellers stay off train tracks stop sucking little boys penises in the name of religion <laughs> and um take a risk why you say that why you say take a risk mm, I think love sometimes is risky business mm. you know but you gotta be willing to take that risk just like you invest in the stock market game doesn't come without loss sometimes hold up go back Okay, so you saying that sometimes people are more willing, sometimes people are more willing to risk losing their money than getting their heart broke. I'm just saying, take a risk. Mm. Learn to take a risk. Sometimes you can't achieve gain without losing a little. Mm. Bars. <laughs> that was <Okay>. bars. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Uh, if you didn't, don't tell me about it. If you did, go ahead and leave a comment on our YouTube channel or SoundCloud or whatever platform we decide to you know, broadcast this on. Hit me up on Facebook. You can find me at Hawk Greg or The Hawk. Hawk is great on Facebook. Look me up on my page. Uh, we'll be getting, putting this thing together. This is really a fly by night. We just decided to turn on the microphones and record and just kind of see what comes out of it. If you're engaged in the conversation, uh, all the great. If you're Let not, us know if there's any topics too that may interest you. Oh, thank you for reminding me. So our next recording or our next book that's coming out, Dawn. Shout out to Dawn. Uh, I'm not gonna give out her last name, but she has a, a catering business in California. Is it catering business? Yes, yeah, catering business. And she did. Do you remember? I read it out to you. Hold up. I'm gonna pull up real quick. It was kind of lengthy. Uh, but it was a really, really dope subject. Let me look up real quick. Ba 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 ba. Where you at, Don? I can't find it. Don't you hate that when you look? Oh, here we go. Hold on. There, one, two, okay, here we go. She said, uh, do husbands and wives have to be best friends? Does it make it better? Does it make for a better relationship? Uh, I think that is a really dope topic and we need to tackle that because uh, if you remember, we were definitely different on this particular subject. So, yeah, I think we should, we should I definitely. I still don't know if you're my best friend. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you. We love you. Peace. For money on my whole team I bang out like your shoe is my OG And I don't really know how to be low-key Logo on my chest like what it do We them followers of Christ, tell me what it do And if you're not one, we can still kick it But I might preach to you, I'm just being real with it Christ said you gotta love them when they front too Your love measured by the hate you can love through And if Christ at the cross for the same Wasn't put him there and died for his killers He can love you, he the boss I be on my jail the way I do it, got a maiming in my halo The truth hurt, but it do work Until you met him, you can never know your true worth I keep it 100 Some of y'all love it, some of y'all don't But I ain't finna change nothing G-O-M, 
We gon' keep it coming. If it's hating, you the only one that does it. Homie, you can hate me, but you ain't getting no hate back. You get no hate back. Homie, you can hate me, but you ain't getting no hate back. Cause all the hating in the world won't make me a hater. Hater, 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 hater. All the hating in the world won't make me a hater. Hater, 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 hater. All the hating in the world won't make me a hater. Hater, 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 hater. All the hating in the world won't make me a hater. Came with a flaw, how I'm finna see the light. I was raised in the dark, but he came for the loss and he paid on the cross. I'm a servant of the king and I bang for the dog. You say you ain't a Christian, I right, cool. And you can't rock with it cause it's not true. But game rock red, snoop rock blue. You ain't never bang in your life, but you got two. Just saying, y'all be acting funny though. First I'm a hater cause I'm broke and my money low. Find out I made a couple hundred on the low, now they like so. I thought it was God over money though. Hate it when I'm paid, hate it when I'm broke They hating on my faith, hating on my folk See them drown in the middle of the ocean When you pull up, baby, hating on your boat Homie, you can hate me, but you ain't getting no hate back You ain't getting no hate back Homie, you can hate me, but you ain't getting no hate back Cause all the hating in the world won't make me a hater Hater, 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 hater All the hating in the world won't make me a hater Hater, 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 hater All the hating in the world won't make me a hater First things first, I'm blessed, boy. All the stress when you dress like Metroid. Uh, all up in the armor, something on a hater like. You won't see this logo on my chest, boy. You already know though. Bumpy get to snapping like a photo on my click click. We the misfits that the spit with something like where them Indians will live. Intense. Uh, it's more the music than your amusement. Knew that before we get formed a union with the boy in Houston. Yeah. I never doubt it, but the law was doing nope. With me or biz, I just grab my sword and with the war to prove it uh, This platform that we using, mask on The pollution is that strong, the illusion is passed on With the youth is I'm back, drawing the blueprints So any hater regard to get mashed on Homie, you can hate me, but you ain't getting no hate back You get no hate back Homie, you can hate me, but you ain't getting no hate back Cause all the hating in the world won't make me a hater Hater, 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 hater All the hating in the world won't make me a hater Don't quit your dreams. Don't quit your dreams. This boy's star. 
say gun, key, gun, key, gun. When I say key, you say gun, key, gun, key, gun. When I say don't, you say quit, don't, quit, don't, quit. When I say don't, you say quit, don't, quit, don't, quit. Ah, you know you gotta keep it going, keep it going. Ah, you know you can't not quit, not quit. Ah, you know you gotta keep it going, keep it going. Oh, you know, you know, you can't quit, can't quit, no